If you're working on a project that involves controlling motors, designing electrical circuits, or processing audio, you probably have something to learn from the frequency domain. But how do you get your signal into the frequency domain so that you can analyze its spectral content? You could save the signal, load it into Python, and compute the fast Fourier transform, like I did while making some of my other videos. I can tell you from experience, this is not a pleasant task. So far, I haven't found a really quick way to analyze the spectral content of my live signals. So, of course, I built my own solution. I'm calling it the Serial Analyzer, an homage to the classic serial plotter and serial monitor available in the Arduino IDE. The Serial Analyzer allows you to view the spectral content of the live signal coming from your microcontroller. Here is the app processing raw gyro data from an MPU-6050. In the first graph, you can see the main oscillations of the pendulum, rising and falling slowly in the time domain. In the frequency domain, we see those oscillations as a peak near 1.5 Hz. When the pendulum stops, you can see that these raw gyro readings have some noise. The spectrum shows that this isn't centered around a particular frequency, implying that it's white noise. To reduce the noise, I'll add a low-pass filter with a cutoff of 5 Hz. In this new graph, I'm plotting an unfiltered and a filtered gyro reading. You can see that the filtered reading is smoother in the time domain, and in the spectrum, we can see a reduction of the high-frequency noise. If you're like me and want to do and discover everything for yourself, go download the app from the link in the description and try it out. If you want to know a little bit more about how the app works, stick around and I'll walk you through the details. To use the app, you need a signal to analyze, so I'll create one in the Arduino IDE. I'll start by opening the serial port with a baud rate of 19,200. In the loop function, I'll write a chirp signal. A chirp signal sweeps from low to high frequencies, which is often used to test the spectral responses of electrical circuits. Once I've uploaded the code to the Arduino, I can review the generated signal using the Serial Analyzer. To get started with the Serial Analyzer, download the installer, install the app, and then run the application. The first thing you need to do inside the app is connect the Arduino using the Serial Port Selection menu. Hmm. Weird. It's not working. Oh yeah, I forgot to set the baud rate. Let's fix that. Now you can see the chirp signal cycling through slow and rapid oscillations. In the spectrum, it looks like a peak walking through different frequencies. If you're happy with how the plots look, you can close the settings drawer. If you want to focus in on the spectrum, deselect the time series plot by clicking the time series icon. You can also resize the app to expand the plot. If you want to review the data, open the serial monitor and then pause the app. While the app is paused, it continues to read from the Arduino, but freezes the view so you have a moment to look through the recently collected data. Press the play button to continue viewing the most recently collected data. If you need to update your Arduino code, press the stop button to disconnect the serial analyzer. Here, I'm updating my code to add another variable that records the time as the first column of my data. I'll be using this in a minute. Now that I've updated the Arduino, I can press the play button to reconnect. You'll find other options inside the settings drawer. For example, you can increase the buffer size to extend the number of points collected in the time series plot. This also increases the number of points used to generate the spectrum. If you don't need every data point, use the decimation slider to skip over several samples. The line thickness and point radius sliders are pretty self-explanatory. I like to increase the point radius to make it easier to access the data point tooltip. Checking the first column is time in milliseconds option will make the app use the first column of your data as the time variable. You can use this to improve the estimated time axis in the time series plot and the estimated sample rate for the spectrum. While I explain the next few settings, I want to show you the Serial Analyzer in action. 
I'm connecting an Adafruit Metro M4 to generate the chirp signal and use it as a source in an RC circuit. I'm using a 10K resistor to limit the current and a 1 microfarad capacitor. Together they make a low-pass filter with a cutoff frequency of just under 16 Hz. I've updated the code to print the input and output signals for the circuit. Focusing on the time domain, we can see that, at low frequencies, the output magnitude is similar to the input magnitude. At high frequencies, the output magnitude diminishes. I can zoom in on the output signal by deselecting the auto scale and adjusting the vertical axis limits. Selecting the Estimate Time Axis option will give you a sense of the signal duration. The spectral plot seems to indicate only a relatively small difference between the input and output signals. That's because its vertical axis has a logarithmic scale. By deselecting the log scale option, you can review the magnitudes on a linear scale. Now the relative magnitudes match better with the time series plot. While I show you the final few settings, I'll read some data from a Max 9814 microphone breakout. Here it is on my guitar. When one of the guitar strings is plucked, you can see the raw audio signal and its spectrum respond in the Serial Analyzer app. Let's adjust the frequency axis to zoom in on the fundamental frequency of this D string. We're expecting a peak at 147 Hz. These other peaks are the harmonics. They give the guitar a much richer sound than the fundamental alone. A windowing function is used to reduce artifacts produced by limiting the signal to a finite number of samples. You can adjust the windowing function if you're serious about DSP. That's it. It's that easy to analyze the spectrum of your serial data. Now go wild and analyze the spectrum of all your Arduino data.